Hi, everybody. Um, in the interest of everybody's time, um, we're going to get started. Uh, I'll let some more people join us from the waiting room as they come. Um, but nice to see all your faces. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today. Um, I'm Jill Carr at Mass Bays, as you all should know on the line today. Um, we have Kiki Schneider with us. She is the IT specialist and has my waterway project manager for EPA in the headquarters office in DC. Um, she's a wealth of knowledge on the topic of this awesome new tool that I think could be really helpful um, to all of us, all of our watershed groups, freshwater and uh, coastal in our area. Um, I've heard a lot from a lot of groups concerns about you know, standardization in sharing water quality data um, and having really a public facing tool to, to share data um, and to kind of look at it in a regional way as opposed to just uh, at the water body scale. So th this, could, this has a lot of promise for our groups um, to be using this in, in their daily work. Um, so with that, I'm excited to see how it all works. And um, uh, just so you know, there's, there's going to be plenty of time for questions at the end, but this is also a really casual group. So um, Kiki will give us opportunities to ask questions throughout the presentation as well. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Kiki and please feel free to share your screen now. All right, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm excited to show you How's My Waterway today. And some of you might have already seen it, uh, but this is uh, the second version of an application that was released uh, publicly in 2013 that pulled data from just one database at EPA. And so now in 2020, we just released this uh, new version of How's My Waterway that pulls uh, water quality information from eight different databases and it we pulled all through web services. So it's really lightweight app. We just uh, get the, the data over the internet and display it here. And so we've been working really hard for the past three years on this app, trying to get everything in, trying to make it user friendly for the public. And so our main vision was to have a water quality application that the public could understand. So we tried really hard to use user friendly terms, although we don't always win that battle, but uh, we, I'll show you um, how we've linked some words to a glossary that we define a lot of words in Housing and Waterway for people to understand. And uh, instead of prior to this, if you wanted information about drinking water, swimming, fishing, um, monitoring, you'd have to go to several different websites, possibly download a PDF and read it or look at several different maps. But now we have pulled this all together into one one spot. So um, you can search for waters in your community, which we have the data cut up by Hub 12 watersheds. So we'll land on the nearest Hub 12, the small watershed near the location you put in. You can also uh, click around and change your location. We have state metrics uh, rolled up data to show you how your state's doing overall. And we have some national information about water quality nationally. So today I'm going to focus on the community level that's the most popular, that's what people really want to know, that's what people are most interested in. So you can start by, oh, uh, one more thing, um, our web address is mywaterway.epa.gov, really simple, so you can go there and search for your location. Uh, you, can, you can say use my location and it will try to zero in depending on your computer settings uh, where you are, or you can just enter in a spot. You can see I've entered in all these places recently, but uh, because we're um, talking to Massachusetts, I'm going to put in Ipswich, Massachusetts. So I put that in. You can also put a place like Mount Rushmore. So it's pulling whatever Esri has, um, location data Esri has. So you can, so when you enter your location, you will land on the nearest Hub 12, and you'll see the outline right there. And this will give you an overview of what's happening in your watershed. And so in this watershed, Lower Ipswich River, right here, and if you're familiar with HUC numbers, you can actually, we have the HUC number here, the 12-digit HUC, and you're, you know that number, you can actually put that in the search box as well, and you will land on, right on that particular um, HUC 12. So we, we explain, we, you land here and you explain 
we're explaining what a watershed is because most of the public does not know what a watershed is. So when you click on this, words that have a little book next to it, the glossary will come up and we have had um, come up with user-friendly terms or public-friendly terms for a lot of these. And so we define what a watershed is there. We also have over 90 terms in this glossary throughout the app. Okay, so when you come here, you'll see that there's 21 water bodies that these are water bodies that were assessed by the state of Massachusetts, are evaluated for different uses. And so there's 21 here. You can see there's 45 monitoring locations. And I'm gonna go into more depth on the monitoring locations when I get to the monitoring page. I just wanted to show you, you can turn this on and this will show you all the monitoring locations that are coming from the water quality portal. So if you've entered your data into WQX at EPA or USGS, uh, they're not, they, we have USGS data in there too. It will sh um, sh we're pulling this from the water quality portal, so it will show up here and how's my waterway. I know there's some issues right now with that. It's not always showing up, so we're trying to fix that problem. I think we figured out what it is. So if you don't see uh, your monitoring location, you can email me through the contact us form on this site, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. So we also have a, a permitted dischargers tab. If there's um, a entity that has a permit to discharge into the water, it will show up there as well. But there is none in this watershed. We can show another one later. So you come to this map and maybe this is not the watershed you want to land on. So you can click outside of it and you can update to the next one over and all the data will update. So you just, we're just doing it one at a time because it will overwhelm our system if we pulled in all the data at the same time on the map. You can also expand the map if you want it to be full screen. You can get a better idea of where you are. We have different layers you can turn off. If you don't like our light gray canvas, you can put on imagery. You can do terrain with labels. If you have any suggestions about other ones, you can feel free to suggest one. Uh, you can turn on any of the layers here too. So we have a layer for uh, other watersheds. So if you don't know where the Hub 12 outlines are by just looking at a map, you, uh, this will show you. And so, so you can click on this watershed and update or another watershed. And all this works when you're not in full screen too. Just you can just see the map better. And if you have a big screen like me, it's kind of cool. So um, you can click on the map and get information on these water bodies that the state of Massachusetts has evaluated. And you can see that the year last reported is 2014. So Massachusetts data is a lot, sometimes older than a lot of the other states we have. A lot of states have already submitted their 2020 data. This is a little dated. Uh, they are working, I know they're working on submitting 2016 data soon and hopefully we'll get up to date at some point. But you can see right there when this data has been reported. And so you'll see what uses the water has been evaluated for. So since one use, one or more uses is impaired, the water shows as impaired. So it's impaired for aquatic life, recreation, and sometimes the condition's unknown. And so we also list the impairment categories or pollute, you could call it pollutants, but they're not always pollutants. Um, so we're calling it impairments. And uh, if you don't know what it is, you can click on what's bacteria and other microbes. I think the more scientific term is pathogens, but we updated this term for the public. So um, you get a definition and what you can do for most of these. We want the public to get inspired to rest help restore their watershed. And so in each, each individual water body has a water body report page. So what we've done here is we've rolled up stuff to be more public friendly. It's not exactly the words that the state has submitted. Um, you can also click the list over here and you can see the same as the map. Some people like clicking through lists, some people like maps. So we have it in both. So I just mentioned the water body report page. Um, so what you're seeing now is these rolled up names that we kept consistent throughout the app, no matter what the state had actually submitted to us. So when you click on the water body report page, now each water body that has that Massachusetts evaluated has a water body report page. So if someone was just interested in one particular water body, you could actually send them this URL, it will go right here. So um, as you'll see, like I said, Massachusetts, um, their term looks like for uh, fish consumption is fish and shellfish consumption is shellfish harvesting. So that's been rolled up into the fish consumption 
use category here. So you can see everything that they have put um, submitted to our database before we rolled it up into the other terms. And stuff like aesthetic would be an other use. You can see all the information is coming from our database here. Is it on the 303D list? Does it need a TMDL? Um, the organization name, Massachusetts. Uh, what type of water is it? Where is it located? And then if there's any plans, TMDLs, we would list them here as well. So you can do that for each water body. And if you don't know, if you're clicking through the list and you don't know where this water body is, you can click view on map and it will zoom in right to it there. That's the overview page that just gives you kind of, you know, a basic overview. And then after this, we can click on the swimming, eating fish, and aquatic life. If you just want to dive right into those categories, you can actually do it from the home page, which I think I forgot to mention. There's buttons for swimming, eating fish, aquatic life, and drinking water because that's the, that, those were the most frequently asked questions to our office of water is people were concerned about those four things, drinking water being the biggest one. So, as you click through, instead of seeing everything about the water body, when you a lot of more stuff, when you click on the overview page, you can go to swimming and say, oh, I just care what's been assessed for swimming here. So I'm going to zoom out a little. And sometimes the water body is outside the HUC-12. It's kind of a data thing going on there. But so you can see that one water body here has been assessed for swimming and boating. And it's assessed, or no, four have been assessed, but one has been assessed good. So you can see that. And so all these tabs kind of show the same thing. So just say you're just interested in eating fish or fish consumption, you click on that and you can see where the fish consumption uh, data has, which water bodies have that. Uh, we also have links to each state's fish advisories page because that is where the most up-to-date data is. So obviously our data from in Massachusetts is a little old. So if you click on this, you'll go to the Massachusetts Fish Advisories website and to get more up-to-date data. So same thing for aquatic life. We've defined it here. People don't know what that is. Aquatic life status of fish, macro, invertebrate, plants and animals that live in the water. And then you can see which water bodies. There's one good one over here. So that one's good for aquatic life. Well, in 2014. So, so that's the first four tabs, which um, show all the data from our TAINS database, our assessment and TMDL database. And so before I move on to the drinking water tab, I'll stop and see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so the next, the next tab is drinking water. And so this is, oh, my layer's still on for the watersheds. That's cool. Um, let me turn that one off. Okay, so this is coming from our uh, Safe Drinking Water Information System at EPA. And so we're not showing, we're showing who provides the drinking water in your county, the closest county that, or the water, the county that this water should reside in. And so if you click on here, you will get a list of public water systems that provide drinking water in the county. So starting with the biggest one, and then we go down. You can filter through this list. If there's any groundwater, it will show groundwater and surface water right here, the source, or you can filter by name. So when you open this, this is, looks like, let me go, population serve. This is the biggest water system, so I'm going to click on that. You can see if there's been any health-based violations. Um, you can see if it's active, and you can click on here for more details, and this will bring you right to our Safe Drinking Water Information System and you can get more data, you can find out what the violation was and when it was, and all sorts of other stuff. But that will, you will exit the app and go to our other database, our Safe Drinking Water database. You can also, there's a lot of text on the drinking water page because it's such a big issue, so we had to put a lot of caveats and explain what we're showing. You can also turn off the text on any page in this community level, and you can just see the systems if you don't want to read all that text or you've already read it. So our next tab is who withdraws water for drinking here. So this will show the watershed again that we searched for. And this, these, this will list all these facilities that withdraw drinking water to treat. And they might not be located in this watershed, but they withdraw it from this watershed. You can toggle between surface and groundwater here. 
Um, I guess I should mention we worked extensively with the states to get the message right here for over a year. It took a long time to, to display this, how it should be represented. So I, I just want to mention that in the beginning. And whenever states submit data to us and it's approved, it shows up here automatically. So say, say Massachusetts decided to submit 2020 data tomorrow, that would be great. And it's improved, approved, it would just show up here. So you wouldn't be seeing 2014 anymore, you'd be seeing 2020. So hopefully that will happen in um, not too long from now. But uh, so these are the drinking water withdrawals. Same thing, you click on it, you can go to the Safe Drinking Water Information System and get more details. And then the last tab on the drinking water page are which waters have been assessed for drinking water use. So this means these waters were identified by the state uh, as potential future sources of drinking water. I should turn on back on the text for that one because it's a little complicated. Uh, so this is raw water pretreatment. Uh, we don't have any in this watershed that were identified as good or impaired. It's just condition unknown. So if you don't know what condition unknown means, you can also go to the glossary and search for it. So that is, uh, it's when a water body is identified for a specific use, but not assessed. So it's been identified for that, but they just did not assess it yet. So if you go to Maine, actually there's a lot of good uh, potential sources of drinking water. I honestly can't find that many in other states. So I always go to Maine to show that. Um, so this is coming from our assessment and TMDL database as well. So when you see on the overview page, if it was a, uh, you can, we list the uses, if it was drinking water was evaluated, that's what we're showing here on the drinking water page. Okay, so that's drinking water. I'm going to move on to monitoring, so let's see if there's any questions on the drinking water stuff, because that's, there's a lot of things there. Okay. Kiki, Kiki, I have a question. This is Jill. Um, you mentioned that uh, a, a brand new year of data would just replace all the old data. Is that what all of these tabs, is that generally across this tool that um, new data um, replaces old data? Yes. Yeah. So since we're pulling it in through services, we don't need to update anything. We don't need to update any spreadsheets or anything. If it's in their database and it's been approved and it's new, like the drinking water stuff. We just we just had some comments from New York where the we were in the wrong watershed. There was a, a bar that was in New York City and it said it was in upstate New York. So we fixed that in the in the data that we're pulling in the web service and it's fixed automatically. So yeah, so when when the state submits that new data, it will show up from all these tabs, including monitoring. If you submit to WQX, it's approved. It should show up here, but like I said, we're having a little bit of an issue with that. We're Salem, Massachusetts, and especially so, we have the folks at the USGS trying to fix that. So once they fix it, um, should should appear <laughs> automatically. So, but that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. I was I was also kind of wondering if so. Say Mass DEP submits the 2020 data tomorrow, will it replace the 2014 so that you can no longer see that? Yeah, this is just the most recent data. Okay. Yeah, we actually um, are working on a tool because th there's a need for it uh, where you can, it, I think it will be outside of this app, it'll be a separate tool where you could go back and see the other data from different years. Great. Yeah. Um, Kiki, this is Margarita Pryor in Region 1. I have a question also. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, on the on the drinking water sources, is there a way they don't identify where the wells are or where the withdrawals are, or is that all embedded in the individual um, supplier information that you pulled up? That's a good point. Um, I meant to mention that we're, we're, we can't show any locations for drinking water for security reasons, so we don't mm -hmm. we don't show locations. I meant to mention that. So, but at least if you go into each one of those um, suppliers, I guess is the word to yeah. use, it will tell you what, where they draw the water from and sort of what the um, volume of water. We have a lot of drought problems, you know, very severe, particularly in the Ipswich. And um, that would be good to know, you know, how much was being pulled out and where it was going once it was pulled out. 
You know, that might be if you go to SIDWIS, um, but I haven't looked at that database extensively. It's, I just clicked on the more detailed link. Um, you go here, there's more information about that, but I don't know if there, we have, so it will, it will show you the facility name and the type if it's a well. It's an intake treatment plant, pump facility, et cetera. But I don't think there's any location information in there, if that makes sense. Yep. So it's just something we would have to follow up on, you know, separately. Yeah. Um, if you do have questions, um, there, at the top, there's a contact us form. And actually, just go straight to me. So you can <laughs> email me or you can email mywaterwayep.gov, which is my other email address. Um, so I can actually the person that helped us with this drinking water section in the drinking water office, he's now in our branch. So he's helping with all the drinking water questions. So if you want to send that to me, I can, I can forward it to him too. Cause I don't know Thanks. about the drinking water stuff. Sure. Okay. So the next section is monitoring. So this is where we pull all the data um, that's entered into WQX and then shows up in the water quality portal and then we're pulling it into here. So um, I have the water quality portal up just because I know someone, there's a water quality portal website and I search for Salem, Massachusetts, and I know that data is not showing up in Hell's My Waterway uh, for monitoring for some reason. That's a problem we're currently fixing, but it does show up in the water quality portal. I'm not actually sure where Salem is, but you guys probably know if you look at this map. Um, so as you can see, there's a ton of monitoring locations where I searched. So uh, we're supposed to be pulling this into Housing and Waterway, but for most locations it's working, but it's not working for this watershed. So I'm trying to investigate that now, but I'm actually in a different watershed. So I'm in Ipswich. So lower Ipswich River watershed. Um, so you can see these are all the monitoring locations here. And if you click on one, it will tell you. So this uh, data was submitted by the Ipswich River Watershed Association, and we have the location type, river stream, monitoring site ID, samples, measurements, and then we have the characteristics that it was evaluated for. And you can actually, this is the only place in the app where you can download the data directly because we actually had that capability in the water quality portal. So unfortunately, we don't show the date on, on here, and it's going to be a different date than the other water body information from the state. So um, you actually have to download the CSV to find the date. So I can just do that now. I'm trying to get it on here. Uh, when you open the map, it's just a little complicated for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, working with USGS to get that. So when you open the data, if you are familiar with how to read this, there would be an activity start date and then that, that's the date. So this is from 2018. This, this monitoring data. So that's more up to date than the state's data. So there's a bunch of Ipswich River Watershed Association sites here. And you can, if you want to search by org ID, it will uh, do that for you. And I guess IRWA is where we're, we wanted to search. And so all these are from that organization here. So you can see all of them at once. And then when you highlight on the list here, it should highlight on the map. So I just moused over and then the, the dots on the map turn blue. So you can see where that station is because there's so many stations. I mean, sometimes you cut like Pennsylvania or has, has done a lot of work. So you'll go in, you'll see like 300 monitoring locations everywhere you go. So, so yeah, these are all everything that was submitted in WQX or theoretically supposed to be. And uh, you can also search by site ID if you know that number right there. Or and you can search by the number of measurements that were taken. So with the biggest one being first, which is a thousand. So you might want to know what, what's being monitored or you, maybe you're just interested in nutrients and you just want to see the stations that have data on nutrients so you can filter through here that way and you can just see um, nutrients you can turn on several at once i believe yes um, to see those categories these are the most popular categories that are searched for in the portal so that's where we put where i put those if if you think there should be another one let me know 
and we would happily we can happily put more on here but those were the, the most popular ones so for this monitoring page uh, like I said the data you can download it in the list or in the map and then we send you off to the portal the water quality portal here because we don't yet have a separate monitoring page in how's my waterway that we want to we are going to have one soon I showed you the water body report page so the the idea is instead of sending you off to the portal when you go to a monitoring station, you should be able to get a page for that station that has more information. And so we've decided we're going to incorporate USGS stream gauge data in here with all the charts, the, the height, and um, all that stuff that USGS has on their site. We're going to make a separate monitoring page for each station and include the water quality portal information and the USGS stream gauge data. We'll have charts and graphs on that page as well. So that's our plan for this fall is to do that. We're trying to get closer and closer to not sending people off to other other sites. So that's that's one of our plans for monitoring. Okay, so that's the monitoring page, and I know you all were interested in that one. Um, let me see if you have any questions, more questions about monitoring before I move on. Um, this is this is Ben. Um, I was I, I have a question. Yeah, I was just curious. I still haven't quite wrapped my mind around the difference between how data gets into the monitoring versus how data gets into the other sections. Um, how do you distinguish between the data that should go to monitoring and the data that should go to the previous sections you were describing? That's a, that's a good question. Um, so when we designed this, we wanted the user to not care which database is coming from as long as they got the information. So um, these are different databases at EPA. So you don't have to, you, you actually don't have to know to go to the water quality portal to get the monitoring information. So we're pulling that data from, I'm, I hope I'm answering your question, uh, from the water quality portal. We're, sh um, we're pulling drinking water from our drinking water database. And we're pulling the first well, swimming, fishing, aquatic life, and then the water body information on this page from our assessment and TMDL database. So imagine a person from the public trying to get all that information going to all four of those sites. So we just have it all here. And our discharger information is from ECHO, our enforcement and compliance history online. But I do have a data page, so that was probably hard to follow, but I have a data page up here. So we've attempted We've listed all the databases and we link to them. So each of these is a link to that databases webpage. So I have the attains, the assessment one, the enforcement, the grants, which I haven't gotten to yet, safe drinking water, and then the water quality portal and some watershed boundary database here. And so on this page, I've said where you can find it. So um, it will say, you know, you can find this on the overview tab, swimming, eating fish, aquatic life identified issues, et cetera. So I don't know if that answered your question or not. Uh, yeah, that, that was perfect. Um, okay. <laughs> so so um, would it be possible, so I'm wondering, um, uh, D, state uh, DEP data, mm -hmm. um, would it be possible that we would see state DEP data in the monitoring tab, uh, that, say from 2017, um, oh, okay. but but we wouldn't but we wouldn't see the uh, their assessment um, uh, ratings um, in the other tabs until until they've officially issued it. Is that possible? Yeah. So if if the state did submit, I think there is some. There we go, right there. So yeah. So this data, if if Massachusetts DEP submitted more recent data in the portal, it's here. So you don't have to wait for the other, the other is mandated through the Clean Water Act. So they're supposed to submit that every two years. They're a little behind. Um, so uh, yeah, so this, if this is more recent, it, it will be here before that 2014, if that makes sense. I see, yep, okay, thanks. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a little confusing. Um, okay, so I have a few more tabs on the, community level. So our next is, okay, these waters are monitored. Now maybe I want to know about the issues. Can you summarize the issues in this watershed? So this gives an overview of the issues and 
as you can see, 71% of the waters in this watershed are impaired for something. So we actually list all the impairment categories in the watershed here. So you can turn these on and off. If you're just interested in mercury, it will just show the waters that are impaired for mercury. You can turn on a few at once. You can turn that off if you're just interested in low oxygen. So you can filter through here and just see where these, these impairments are. And um, if there's a discharger with a significant effluent violation, it will show up here and then you can click on it. And I need, I need to go to a watershed that has one just so I can show you. I know Greenbelt, Maryland has one. So we, we didn't include administrative violations, you know, stuff like that. We just wanted to include the major violations there, but a lot of facilities were getting mad at us, so we decided to filter it out. Um, so if they have a significant effluent violation, we're a little slow right now, it will show up with the impairment information. There is the caveat though that those percentages re um, reflect assessed water. So if you've got a large watershed, for example, that has a lot of unassessed waters, you're really perhaps not going to get the full picture. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we have it. I don't know why it's being so slow. Unfortunately, something must be going on. Let me just go back. Oh, well, hmm. oh, there they are, okay. So yeah, so we, we say assess, we worked the states a lot and what to say here. Um, yeah, the 100% of the assessed waters are impaired. I, I should have mentioned, um, let me go back. Well, let me show you the discharger real quick, then I'll go back. So um, this is the discharger with a significant effluent violation. And so you'll get um, information here about there's been formal action, has there been an inspection? Is there a violation within the last three years for this data? And then this will take you to the facility report in ECHO, and you can actually see what the violation was for in more details on that violation. And since there weren't any dischargers in Massachusetts, so no, there's not many in Greenbelt either, but on the overview page, they will show up on this. And they don't have to have a violation, it's just every, the dischargers that um, that are in that watershed. So I should mention that there's a, a layer, which I meant, I knew I forgot something when I first landed on this app. So one of the layers is, so these, this is showing the water that the state evaluated, but there's a lot more waters that exist, and you probably know that. And so you can turn, there's a layer called mapped water all. So this is all the water that's been mapped by the USGS and EPA in our national hydrography data set and the blue water you see there's a lot that has been assessed that is running through here but there might be like this little segment right here you might say that's the stream in my backyard and you didn't evaluate it you could actually contact your your state and tell them to do it so um it's pretty this watershed seems pretty good coverage so you can see all the waters there that 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 exist, and if they're not assessed, you could see it, if that makes sense. We also have a county layer, so you can see where the county lines are there. So back to the identify issues. So yeah, these are the, the assessed waters that are impaired. And uh, I guess I could turn on that, so you can see other water bodies there too. Okay, so what my, my branch chief likes to do is if there's a discharger, he likes to look at it next to the water body and, and find out the impairment and make a assumption that that discharger might have polluted that water body with their violation. So it's kind of neat um, to look at. So after the identified issues tab, you say, okay, well, my watershed's got some problems, so what's being done to restore it? So in here, if there, so we don't have location information for these plans yet, but we hope to. So we're working with the database, um, the, our non-point source pollution database, our 319 grants, our Clean Water Act 319 grants show up here. So if there's 
any of those 319 projects in this watershed, they show up and you click on it, you can get the funds, the project start date if it's completed, if there's any documents, and then this will take you to our GRITS or Grants Tracking Database for a deeper dive. And then our next tab is our Restoration Plans tab. These are actually the TMDLs. And about 98% of them are TMDLs and probably like 3% are watershed plans or protection plans. So we're working on putting in a separate tab for protection plans um, on this tab. But right now this watershed has one, looks like has one TMDL. So you can get more information on that. And each TMDL has its own page, like in the water body report page and the future monitoring page. So if you are just interested in this TMDL, uh, you can, and you want to email this TMDL to someone instead of coming in, how's my waterway and trying to search it and find it, you can just give them this link and say, here's the stuff you want to see. They can read through all these documents if they want. And so it's got a bunch of information on that right there. And then our la lastly, our last tab on this community level is the protect page. And so right now we're working on trying to put more stuff in here. We don't have that much. We have tips on how you can protect your watershed. And we have, uh, if there's any protection projects in this watershed from our grants database, they show up here. And uh, so in the future, we'd like to enhance this. We're working on it to get in. The River Network has a service that we can use that has a bunch of watershed groups by watershed. They're active, so we want to put that in. Eventually, just needs to go through a lot of approvals at EPA before I can get that done, so I'm working on that. And uh, also put in statewide healthy watershed scores by watershed. So we're working on putting that in this fall and a few other things on this protect page to make it more active. So that's the community level. And I think I showed you all these buttons at the top. Oh, there's also an about page that kind of explains more if you're a first time user, what am I looking at? What is this? It's gonna be really confusing. Um, and then some questions and answers at the top. And you can also access the glossary at the top as well. So that's a community level and um, I'll take questions if you guys have any more on here. Or I can go to a state real quick and show you the state page. How quickly is the data updated if, after, we, um, after we upload to WQX? Um, so it should show up uh, once it's approved automatically. Um, it, theoretically, it should show up, but I know we're having some problems now with some data in Massachusetts, so we're trying to fix that. If, uh oh, Kiki, do we still have you? <laughs> All right, we'll give her a couple minutes to log back on. Must be having some connection issues. So I'm, I'm really glad that she's been able to highlight um, Ipswich River. Uh, since I know that, Ryan, you've been submitting data to WQX, um, a, a lot of groups that I've been speaking with, you know, one, one of the first questions about WQX is why, you know, it's, it's going to cost me a lot of time and it's not necessarily required. So why um, should I enter data to WQX? How does it benefit my group? Um, and I think one of the biggest benefits to groups is that it um, creates this public facing tool, which was okay when it was the, uh, the water quality portal. And now it's getting closer to great now that it's this, um, this very visible mapping tool, much more intuitive than the portal was. Um, so I'm really, really grateful that a couple of our groups are, are already entering their data. Um, but it's going to be really important to hear your experience with this, if this is working for you and your group. Um, because Kiki and others at EPA are, they have an open ear and they're willing to take our, our constructive criticisms on these tools. So keep that in mind as you use it. Hey, Jill, this is Margarita. Um, do you know how um, transferable the data are in, the, in this system? Uh, I, even from something as simple as um, taking the pictures, for example, I, rather than a screenshot, but the data that they have that creates, for example, the 
picture of the assessed and unassessed waters and what their impairments are, that sort of thing. Uh, how hard would it be to, to download and use those visualizations and some of the data? Yeah, that's a that's a good question for Kiki. I'm looking around now, and I'm not. I don't see kind of like an export button where um, you can export a map to you know a JPEG or something like that. But that does seem like an obvious choice. Um, what I do yeah. know, if a group really wanted to, they could embed this tool into other websites, like their own organization website, um, and have it kind of locked on their location. Um, so that when people log on, they're, they're looking at, you know, for example, Ipswich River's um, data right in front of them. So people can use it in that way, but in terms of physical products, you know, to print out, I'm not sure. Um, Kiki's going to have to answer that question for us. I'll collect any other questions we have now and I can pass them through her. Um, if anybody else wants to bring up a question. Hi, Kiki. Is this? Can you hear me? Hi, we see you, um, Kiki. Yeah. Okay. Lost her. But you can. You okay. Can. Um. Can you? I guess you can take the question. Yeah. Um. I'm Godo. I'm working with Ryan for the summer. Hi. And I wanted to know. Same here. Um. So for me and Ryan and I have uploaded data dating back to like 1997. Um, is there a is there a place on the house my waterway where you can actually check the year you want to check it on or assess the data and see time series or maybe just a difference in water quality over the years? How do I go to the specific year? Right. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I I, I kind of touched on that earlier with a question to her. Um, can you look at previous years of data or only the most recent? And the answer to that was only the most recent. Um, so you're only going to look at your at Ipswich River's most recent data that was submitted through WQX, but she mentioned that they want to work on a tool, a separate tool that you can look backwards, which would be great. Okay. Thanks. But there is the ability when you go into that, when you go into the sites, there is the ability to download that CSV file that has, I think, all data, right? That's right. Yeah. So when you when you, you can download it from the map, um, each site, and uh, when you download the CSV, it, it looks kind of like the template that went into WQX initially. So it has the sampling date and you know all the parameters measured. Okay. Let's see if I can I pull. Up, uh, sorry, Ben. Go ahead. I had a question about the. Uh, is there anything? I'm wondering if there's anything. In, that you would that you would do in the water quality portal that you can't do here. Um, it seems like it seems like now. I, I'm, I agree that this is kind of pretty a pretty exciting tool. Um, it seems like now we can get everything we need in the water here that we might have gotten from the water quality portal. Yeah. Is that right. Good question um, and good point. Uh, let me share my screen because I've got the tool back up. Okay. Do you see the water, the, uh, how's my waterway again? Yep. You see my screen? Okay, great. Um, yeah, I, I do remember in the water quality portal, you can search by organization. So I don't see that here um, in how's my waterway. I, I'm not sure the general public would need that if you're already going to guide them to your location, your watershed. Um, but I'm not seeing that here, where, where people could actually search by org. Let's see, let's go back to Ipswich. Monitoring. Oh, I guess, oh, so you could search here by organization ID. All right, so um, I suppose it does have just about everything that the portal has. Okay, Kiki's back. <laughs> Hi, Kiki, can you hear us? All right, 
let's give her another minute. The other, the other thing that I was going to ask, I was going to ask her to demonstrate if she could, um, how we could, how somebody could go in and look for just bacteria data, uh, just for a certain watershed, and if they were mm -hmm. interested in, if they were interested in seeing what all the, what the bacteria data was, the most recent and and, and the history of the bacteria data at, at, and the history. at specific locations. Right. Yeah, the, the history piece is something I, I do really feel like is lacking from here in terms of helpfulness to the groups. Um, I'm interested to see what they work on this fall um, for another tool that, that brings it all together. Can you hear me? I'm back. Yes, yes we can. So I had to switch computers because my computer died, it just froze. If I had to actually forced it off, now I'm on my other computer. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's like presenter's <laughs> worst nightmare. <laughs> So um, at least it was mostly done, but I, t I heard you talking about history. And uh, so there used to be this expert query tool that we had to decommission because the database changed um, for, for more advanced users to look at previous years. And so we're working on um, developing that again. So you'll be able to, to actually see data from previous cycles and previous years. That's great. Yeah. and. Um, we don't show trends over time with the state data because different waters are assessed every cycle, so it wouldn't really be accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, while you're gone, we had a, another question too about exporting maps and images um, from this display. Is that possible? Uh -huh. um, well, we don't have a function for that now, but we are planning on um, putting in a tool where you can actually get the, uh, take the map and put it in ArcGIS online or ArcGIS desktop and play with the data and add your own data. Great. Yeah, so we're working on that too. It got really dark in my house because about the thunderstorm. Um, <laughs> it looks like I'm in the dark. Um, so yeah, that's our plan. So you can actually take this, make your own, like just take it into ArcGIS, make your own map, add your, your data too. And uh, so that's that's something we're working towards. Um, so we don't have an export a map yet. Um, and also we need to configure our databases for you to be able to download the data like you can for the monitoring data. And so we're working towards that too, but we're not we're not there yet. So we'd like we like to have people to be able to download all the data in the app, but it only works on the monitoring page right now. And with that data download, you gave an example of um, downloading a CSV from one station, but is there a way to download all of the data from a whole watershed? Um, not at the moment, but that's an interesting idea. I will or, or even everything from one organization. It, just more than one station at a time. Uh -huh. Not in House My Waterway, but you, I'm not sure if you can do that in the portal, but I'll ask. I'll ask about that. Good question. And Ben, ben had a great question about uh, what, what are the, the, if there are any big differences between this and the portal besides the obvious aesthetics and usability? Um, well, we have selected certain attributes to display from the portal or in the portal if that makes sense but it's it's what we're displaying is coming from the portal that I might have changed a couple words to make it more public friendly examples and measurements I believe are different words in the portal um, and I think I put them in the glossary of what they actually are called mm -hmm. Great. So samples were activity count and activity count in um, water quality portal, which sample made more sense for the public. And then me measurements, I'm going to the glass street because I can't remember. Measure me, measurements was results count in the portal. So those are the two words we changed for, the, if you remember the public coming here for the first time, hoping that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, sorry, just trying to get my screen situated. Uh, I had a, a question for you um, about 
um, watershed groups that might submit aquatic life data, things like fish counts, you know, um, diadromous fish runs or benthic macroinvertebrate sampling. All that information can be submitted to WQX, but I'm wondering if it lives anywhere other than in monitor, like if that would show up in aquatic life, for example. Um, not at the moment, no. That is, I can write that down to explore that though. If it's in, if it's in WQX, we should be able to pull it somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you're, um, if you're looking at the aquatic life or the other, the, those tabs to the left, um, then the, the map actually color codes, color codes things based on the quality of the water, based on the water quality. Um, mm -hmm. If you're looking at the monitoring tab, then is it correct that the map doesn't have any color coding, it just shows locations, is that, is that right? Or is, yeah. there a way to, is there a way to get the locations to color code um, based on some parameter? Um, that's funny. We used to have that function, and then when we redesigned this a year ago, and then we could not color code them anymore, but I liked the color code. And so I'm going to ask about that, too. <laughs> but yeah, we used, to, oops, we used to have that. Yeah, it seems like, um, so one thing I was, I was wondering if you could demonstrate for us was if, or um, how, how somebody would go in if they were interested in looking at just, for example, one parameter, just bacteria data. Uh -huh. um, how somebody could go in and just see the, the latest bacteria data for a watershed and then may be able to drill in on the, on the locations and see the history of, of the bacteria data for that location. Um, and and if, if you're doing that, it'd be nice to have the locations color coded based on the bacteria levels. Mm. Oh, back levels. Oh, interesting. Histories. Okay. I'm not an expert in WQX, so I'll have to ask my subject matter experts. But we have a meeting tomorrow, so I can ask them. How would how would someone currently find in the scenario that we're looking at? How would they find the bio the um, bacterial data? Is that in the micro microbiological? Oh my gosh. Where did it go? I thought we had a bacterial category. Maybe we don't. Hmm. At, at one place you list uh, biological and microbiological, or no, you list bacteria and microbiology uh, in one of, one of your drop down menus. But I noticed that on this yeah. one you did not. And bacteria, I think, is what people are most familiar with. No, that is, I think you just reminded me that, um, yeah. Well, for the monitoring data, yeah, we don't have a, that category, but um, we could put it in. And uh, so, so the bacteria and other microbes you saw, that was from the state submitted Clean Water Act assessments. So that's different than that was coming from the portal on the monitoring page. Okay. If that makes sense. So would that, that would probably be in swimming then? Uh, no. Uh, click on a red water and see what. Okay, bacteria and other microbes. Yeah, so that's what the, the states had found that that water was impaired for bacteria and other microbes in their assessment of that water in 2014, because that was the most recent Massachusetts data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the thing on that was, Right, so the thing on that would be, it would be, it would be old data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, so there's, there, there might be a little bit of a missed opportunity to highlight uh -huh. the bacteria data from the monitoring groups. Yeah, we can put that in. Um, yeah, I think that actually has on my list. You're in, I have a Great. huge list. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'll ask them tomorrow. I have this. I have this topic on my agenda for tomorrow for my team meeting. So, yeah, you can email me too. Any other stuff you want me to ask tomorrow? That's great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being so open to that. 
Sure. This is a work in progress. So we did so much work on it. It took three years to get it to this point. We have so many other plans that we want to, like we want to put in the tribes, get their own pages for tribal data. This is just a bunch of stuff we want to put in agil, harmful agil blooms. And um, so we, we plan to do a update it every quarter and with our new data, if it works out with timing, we put new stuff in. So like October to December this year and then January to March next year, we'll, we'll be putting in more data. So, so any suggestions you have, send me and I can, if it's possible, I can try to fit it in. Um, that bacteria one should be easy though. That sounds like that, that should be easy to put in, possibly for the fall. Oh wow, it's really starting to storm. Hopefully my, <laughs> don't crash again. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. If, if you were able to add that bacteria um, filtering option, that would be really great, especially if it can be color coded since um, mm -hmm. there are set standards. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I do miss that color code. There was a technical reason why we didn't do it, so I'll have to revisit. I'm going to revisit that. All right, um, we have a couple more minutes. So, was there any other questions? Hi, uh, this is Ryan from Ipswich River. Hi. Uh, first, thanks for using our watershed as an example. That was that was cool. <laughs> um, secondly, um, I think I heard someone mention you can embed this in a website. Is that correct? Like, could you embed uh, the map in a website? So. Eventually, you'll be able to take this map and do anything you want with it, but we don't have that functionality now. Mm. Um, we have all, if you're a code savvy person, we actually, all our code is available on GitHub for this app. Um, so anyone that wanted to use our code to develop something similar can, it's all public right now. Okay. But eventually it will be easier where you can just grab the map yourself and then put it in. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can put it into ArcGIS and add your own data, or you could grab a map and put it in a website. But we don't, we can't do that easily now. You'd have to be like, know how to code, stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, sure. All right, well, thank you all. And uh, please go play with it and email me any observations or questions or feedback. Uh, we want to make it better and better. So don't be afraid. You can, you can tell me anything. <laughs> Kiki, thank um, you so much, so much for your time. This was really great. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kiki. I've been waiting for this since 2013. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you. I'm sure you'll hear from us for more questions and ideas. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right, bye. Enjoy Thanks your beach trip. Thanks, <laughs> bye. Bye.